May 19th, 2021, Amsterdam. What started off as a typical gloomy day in Amsterdam would soon turn into something straight out of a movie. No one knew what was bound to happen, but when it happened, all hell broke loose. This story involves masked men, a Brinks truck, multiple shootouts, cars set afire, police chases, and so much more. And you will be surprised how much the loot was. It is the start of the afternoon when nine masked men with automatic rifles jump out of their cars. A black Porsche Cayenne and two black Audi A6s. The Porsche backs up and rams a door. A few minutes earlier, a Brinks truck entered the same exact door. The door was the entrance to Skorne Edelmetalle. Skorne Edelmetalle is one of the three oldest gold trading companies in the world, started by Gerrit Skone in 1739. The Brinks truck that just entered the building carried over 67 million euros in precious metals. The first robbers who went in immediately aimed their automatic rifles at the employees, tied their hands together as well as their feet and proceeded to put masks over their heads so they could not see. While there was mayhem inside the building, Abdi Karim LG was firing his weapon outside the building. He did so to warn people not to interfere and stay away. People walking on the streets feared for their life and residents hid in their houses. In not even a three minute time span, the robbers steal 22 boxes and smaller packages containing gold bars, platina and many other metals. These are divided and loaded amongst the cars to decrease the risk of having no loot at all in case the car with everything in it gets busted. These were not rookies. These guys knew exactly what they were doing. Police later found out that they had been scoping out the building for a few months to plan their heist and even made a detailed video with footage from a drone. Skorn Edelmetalla was moving their operations abroad slowly but surely, making this location obsolete. The robbers somehow knew this and knew this would be their last chance to make a move. Then it was time to flee the scene. Here is where it gets reckless. Whilst loading up the cars, the first police units were called to the scene immediately. As the robbers were driving away, they noticed the first police cars chasing them. They did not hesitate at all to unleash their bullets with their automatic rifles onto the police. The police proceeded to fire back. Mind you, this all happened in the afternoon in the centre of Amsterdam, where there are always people out and about. But these guys did not seem to care. All they saw was dollar signs and the police trying to take it away from them. As the chase proceeded, robbers also threw spikes at the chasing police cars in the hopes of ruining their tyres so they would have to stop chasing them. Experts told police the main reason none of the officers got hit was there was most likely because of the barrel of the weapons they used were rusty. The bullets could come out at unpredictable angles, thus making it harder for the robbers to aim and strike. They proceed to exit Amsterdam at very high speeds. Along the way there, there are still shots being exchanged between the suspects and the police. The suspects arrived at Broek in Waterland, a small village outside of Amsterdam, where they had parked the other getaway vehicles that were a bit less eye-catching than a fast Porsches and Audis. They transfer the loot to the new getaway vehicles, one of which a Renault Megane, and quickly set the Porsche and Audi on fire. You might wonder where the third car went. We'll get to it later. Whilst the cars burn down, they proceed to flee away but their unfamiliarity with the small town and the weather conditions brought them in serious trouble. Unknowingly, they entered a dead end. It was too late to turn around and go back in another direction. They were trapped and they knew it. One of the getaway cars rams right through a garden of a home, hitting a tree. At the time, a mother and daughter were home. They could not believe what they saw. Men dressed in black with balaclavas and automatic rifles exchanging shots with the police in their own garden. That must have been a very scary sight to see. The mother and daughter later told a news reporter that they hid in their closet, but could hear the shots going off. Here is where the group splits. Two of them decide to hide in trash containers in the garden of a house. The only option the others saw fit was to abandon the vehicles and enter the grass fields surrounding the small neighborhood on foot. The end was near. As they plowed through the grass fields, 
they kept exchanging shots with the police. Police officers that were present told the news reporters that they had feared for their lives. The robbers could not escape anymore. The grass fields were kilometers long. Police were chasing them on foot and there was a helicopter that had sight on them, but they would not go down without a fight, which ultimately led to one of them being shot in the field. He took his last breath then and there. His name was Osiris Diawara, 46 years old. Diawara wore a bulletproof vest, but he got hit in the left collarbone, exactly where his vest did not protect him. He leaves behind a 14 year old son. One of the three cars managed to escape the police. The robbers had parked a black BMW under a bridge in Demon prior to the heist as their second getaway vehicle. They unloaded their loot out of the Audi and set it on fire. They then proceeded to drive to Rotterdam South in the BMW. Surveillance cameras show that three men walking near a busy shopping street. They look just like regular pedestrians, and no one passing them could have imagined what they had been up to just two hours ago. They are walking pretty relaxed. One of them still had the same hat and shoes on he did during the heist. It did not seem as if they had any urgency to go into hiding. A few hours later, they can be seen calmly driving away in a Lamborghini Urus and a Golf 8 GTI. Those cars are not cheap. Does crime pay? It is a mind boggling how calm they seemed as if nothing had happened. The news initially reported that there was no loot and the robbery was unsuccessful. The robbers left empty handed. It is not sure whether this was a tactic or they genuinely did not know because the robbers did not leave empty handed. When investigation carried on in the hours after the robbery, it became clear they stole millions worth of goods. The loot was at least 14.5 million euros. The entire Brinks truck carried over 67 million worth of precious metals. So even though they only had a fraction of that, it was still a lot of money. Due to time constraints and the precious metals being very heavy, they could not take any more. Still, 14.5 million euros in three minutes is not bad. It was later revealed that they'd stolen 80 kilos of platinum worth 2.5 million euros alone, 1.5 kilos of gold dust, a lot of gold bars, and an entire box of golden rings and other little accessories. Even though it was a very well planned heist, almost all of them had been caught. Most of them had had immediately been caught in the grass fields in Brook in Waterland. Out of the three guys that managed to flee, one of them was apprehended later that day in Rotterdam. It was not until the 23rd of December 2022 that one of them got caught in Guinea, a West African country. The third one is still on the loose and has yet to be apprehended by law enforcement. It is unknown where he may be currently. Out of the 14.5 million euros, 4.2 million euro worth of goods is still not found. It is unsure how much cash the robbers might have actually made as the goods they stole are very hard to sell. Most of the robbers have been jailed to 18 years in prison for what they did. The violence they used weigh very heavily on their verdict, according to the judge. Only one of them got away with five years because his role was very small, and it was determined that he had not shot at the police during the chase. I wonder if they will see anything from the missing loot after they get out. What do you think? What happened here was unheard of in the Netherlands. It will go down as one of the most violent robberies ever in the country. One experienced officer said that what happened on the 19th of May 2021 was the single most impactful event in his 32 year long career. The news spoke about it for days on end, about the Wild West scenes, the automatic rifles, the police chase, the loot, and of course the bizarre end. It also made the news in many other countries around the world. 